Hola, and welcome to episode 77 of Masters of the Forge. My name's Adam, and here I have Jason. Hi, Jason. Hey, Adam. <laughs> That's it. That's Hello, everyone. Yeah. I'm on a chilly high, folks. <laughs> chilly high. Chilly high. Um, feeling good? Feeling good. Uh, I'm looking forward to a couple weeks off from Masters of the Forge duties. Um... Christmas time, holiday time, feeling good, feeling, trying to uh, forget all the bad, horrible things yeah. in the world, and, and and looking forward to a crisp new year. So, Jason, what have you been up to in the hobby uh, past couple, past week or so? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, I started to read The Outcast Dead from Graham McNeil, um, mm. cause there's a Thousand Sons character in there. Um, Mike was telling me about it, so I thought, hey, let's go ahead and read this. That um, is Malahat Mike of the Canadian, of the Canadian Malahat Mikes? Yes, yes, our <laughs> dear friend of the show, and sometimes, um, I don't know, he shows up here every once in a while. Not often. Yeah. Uh, By here see. you mean not where you are. Well, uh, on the <laughs> on the podcast and here in That's the true. gender neutral, in the gender neutral hobby, uh, he was not in the virtual cave though. He was actually in the physical. He was in the cave. literal. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? I that's you know during so bef sorry before you get into it, <laughs> um, we should mention that we recorded and have find we've got. Uh, our episode 001 of Masters of the Forge, Altar of War, is uh, on its way to Terrace as we speak. Um, thank you so much for editing that. No problem, man. It looks The Altar it of cool. War. Yes. Right, <laughs> We've realized that I need to buy another microphone so that my opponent has their own levels and stuff. Uh, I think that'll, that'll help out a little bit. The sound isn't the best busy best simply because i didn't have a, that second recording device but you should check it out because i think it turned out really well um and it's over on the free buddhas network uh it's not up there yet we will let you know when it is on our facebook page and on the website uh so yep. keep your ears open for that one um but that that was a that was a hoot nanny that was a hoot nanny <laughs> Yes, and it actually has something to do with today's topic. Um, yeah, and you know, um, but what made me what made me think of that was we always say the the uh, gender neutral hobby cave. You know, th we were saying during that recording we we don't have a name for our game space yet. Well, that's what we should call it. We should just call my game room the gender neutral hobby cave. Oh, I thought that's what it was named. Well, no, well I mean, I mean, that's what we've been, that, was. that's kind of what we've been calling this space of the internet where we are, but we should just call that the gender neutral hobby cave. I think that works great. Works for me. <laughs> 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 All right. So besides reading the, um, outcast dead, I received the Raven guard transfers from forge world. I don't think I mentioned this last week, Oh, cool. but they, they came in so I can actually build and paint or paint and put transfers on my little raven guard zone mortalis list um other than that nothing it's been mm -hmm. it's been a busy week i did i did hold on i did one other thing i have scheduled a game for wednesday it's going to be a kill team game um you know small 200 points uh, against my friend alfredo and <laughs> I guess I can talk about future hobby progress. I don't know. Uh, the Kill Team game has a... Or the Kill Team codex, rule set, whatever. Has a list specifically for Raven Guard. Which I thought was cool because I sometimes run their tactics. And I have almost every mini built except for one. And when you hear the loadout, <laughs> you'll know why. Mm-hmm. It is a sergeant with a chain sword and plasma pistol. That's what I like to hear. Yeah. You know, born to die. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> I'm contemplating whether I build that and bling him up and make him look, you know, really, really cool. 
or just not run that list. Mm -hmm. But I've got everything else. It's just that one dude. So I don't yeah, know that that guy. That guy is definitely a, a, a space marine after my own heart, right there. Yeah, he, he's gonna. <laughs> He's gonna basically kill himself. I already know where this is going. Um. <laughs> my chap, my 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 uh, uh, what do you call it? My uh, uh, Star Eagles chapter master is a space breed with a space with a with a plasma pistol and a chainsword on a jetpack. Oh god, he's so terrible. <laughs> I, I so often either... run him as the teeth of Terra, but still, it's still just like, who's this? This is this is so forty k. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know what's funny though is with the was it with both a jump pack and the plasma pistol, it's really going to be what's going to kill him first, movement <laughs> or shooting in Come his on. own phase, not not the <laughs> opponent's phase. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, this is when you have to ask yourself: if I kill my own warlord, do mm. I get the points? <laughs> <laughs> right, I should. <laughs> Well, if I was playing you, I would. If you offed yourself, I would actually give you the point because it'd be hilarious. <laughs> Maybe even a second point if you don't get that orbital bombardment off first. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I'm supposed to have a game. I might build this guy. I don't know. We'll. We'll figure it out. Um, it's on Wednesday, so he'll if he gets built, he's not getting painted. That's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So yeah, spray him black. He's done. <laughs> uh, he's going to be Blood Ravens. You know, Raven Guard. Oh, Blood Ravens. Tactics. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. You know, Blood Ravens are taking over everything. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. that's nice. Let me just put a sticker over your little Ultramarine sign there. Good. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, and that I'm. That was my week. Cool. My week has been somewhat uh, active, um, but uh, I am pretty excited about that Agents of the Imperium book that's coming out. That's, yeah. that's come out this week. I, it's nice to have all of those disparate things in one book that you can go to. I guess there's some hand wringing and consternation about the Sisters of Battle in there. They're not. Yeah changed in any way and a bunch of the units are missing so i think that that's that's pretty much proof that that book is not meant to be a replacement of the sisters of battle codex um, yeah i'd seen some of those comments also um yeah i i don't know it'd be nice if they would actually do more with the sisters of battle and i think they yeah. will because i mean they brought in they brought back the wolfen i mean mm -hmm. they brought back so many things we now have you know, Demon Steel Primarch Recalls. Magnus. I mean, yeah, rubric, new rubric Marines. I mean, it's 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 <sighs> it's it's, it's got to come, and you know, I I mean, clearly I have already, I, I'm holding, I'm having uh, Ralph at at Flipside hold me a one of those Canon S models. So, regardless needs of Lady Gaga. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I love Lady Gaga. I think she's a very talented uh, artist. Anyway, oh, I do too. I just think it's yeah. funny that you know. Well, oh, I yeah. think that was she's... the comment I posted on Facebook. Is like, dude, it's Lady Gaga, or someone else posted. And I was like, this is beautiful. This is wonderful. Yeah, it is. it's yeah. definitely Lady Gaga. Um, but yeah, I I'm, I bought one, so you know, whatever. Um, Chaos Legions are interesting. Uh, Massachusetts James sent me a squad of Space Marines and the two characters from uh, the Prospero box as a Christmas Ooh. present. That was really nice of him. And I'm That's like, now I have now I have four squads of Mark III Space Marines, and I feel aren't like they great? They're so cool, and they look yeah. very um, they look very I don't know knightly. Well, they're Crusade yeah. armor, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm wondering. I keep on flipping between painting them up as Emperor's children now. <laughs> yeah. Like, chaos. Yeah. Or maybe maybe I'll just add them to my um detached my like weird knight army with all the different things in it. As a Space Marine chapter or as Grey Knights or something. I think That could work. That could be pretty cool, actually. If I paint them purple, I guess it won't matter because that's both that's the emperor's children color and the color of that of that uh of my knights so maybe that would 
workout, mm-hmm. like black with purple. Hold on, hold on. You're doing this as 30k, right? Whatever. Well, because you could just run as black shields. Oh, I could run them as black shields. That's so smart. Yeah, but the thing is, if you're is uh, is your armor primarily black or primarily purple? It's black with purple accents and and uh, green shoulder pads. Dude, that could be anyone in the heresy because a lot of the a lot of the legions were still running black armor, mm. and you could just say that your chapter in that legion had purple accents. Cool, that's a good idea, and I'm thinking I might. You know, I was I was ha- I was huffing and hemming and hawing about black the other day. I think I'm actually gonna mm-hmm. attempt the um, paint scheme that they use for that sister as a battle model. Uh, well, not that scheme, but that way of. The- I'm actually gonna probably I'm gonna try to attempt doing the Games Workshop black scheme and and see how that works. How they even even doing that weird edge highlighting because I think it actually so- looks it looks pretty good actually. So black with it's a gray it uses, edge highlight, right? It's gray, but it uses that bluish gray. Um, uh, mm, Eshron? Uh, no, not Eshron. It's it's like it's what you use for the uh, a lot of the um, dark Eldar colors. Okay. Um, all right. I c- I'll, when I when I do it and attempt it, I'll have all the colors listed that i'm using but yeah you you it's the same Sweet. colors you kind of use with the dark eldar that's it's this purplish blue that's been added to the black and and, and the grays and it it it's in it creates an interesting color if you really zoom in on those pictures of the canon s you can see the tints in there so yeah that should be interesting we'll we'll see that and i think that'll work with the purple so yep. I think I think that's one of the main reasons for that, and then the the green will still be a pretty high contrast. Um, then uh, I've also been I started reading book six of Beast Rises, and I'll continue reading those, and we're we're hoping to have a big episode on that coming up in January, just to start knocking these out. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of them, and man, we we really want to get to yeah. other books. It's, yeah. it's important to us. I think I want to get more current with some of these books too, uh, so that the authors will, uh, you know, will want to chat about it and stuff. Yep. Um, yeah, I still haven't read Guy Haley's new um, new novel. I think it's Stormlord. It's uh, the sequel to Bane Blade. I'm looking forward to reading that. Cool. Um, then uh, I oh I did build the new Mechanicus table for the Golden Sprue Cup GT. Oh, dude, that's so yeah. nice. I'm thanks. I'm so jealous. Thanks. Just you know, um, seriously, like <laughs> I knew if I was still up there that I'd be helping you guys build. And <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, being you would far be. away, I'm just like, oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, we're really missing. We're missing you a great deal because uh, it's a lot of work. Um, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just being honest. It's a lot of work. We really miss having you to help us because you always helped us. Um, yeah. The uh, yeah, I, I I I'm always torn between wanting a big centerpiece and being able to put an objective in the center of the battlefield. So past few that we've done, we've had two quasi centerpieces that kind of form one centerpiece. So in this case, we had I have uh one that is more of a military, it's like Skatari command post, and one that's like a large, um mechanicum piece uh and and those are connected by a broken bridge so those can be off center those both of those pieces can be off center diagonally and you can still put you can still put an objective in the middle then there's a medium sized building on each side and a small building on each side and then i use the remaining scrap pieces from the bastion kit to make four small like like a barrier T- style pieces of terrain. Oh yeah, that's right. Those tops kind of look like well, they don't look exactly like um, Aegis. Aegis lines, but they're really yeah. similar. Yeah, what I did with those was I took I took the they're the top ramparts of the bastion, which I didn't need because mm-hmm. I put kind of a landing pad on top of the bastion, um, and uh, I took uh, some of the uh, uh, street lamps that come with mm-hmm. the kits 
and I, I, I cut off the bottom and glued that to those so that there was like a light in there. And uh, then I put like a Vox caster on each one or like a communications array on each one. Yeah. So those were, I put the, I kind of see those as kind of forward communications emplacements or like a, like a foreman's kind of field office type thing. So I thought those were, th- that would work pretty well for the Mechanicus style. And there are four of those to yeah. sp- to kind of just spread around in places that look a little too empty on the table. And, and you know, just barricades in general work great for that because they provide the four plus cover save. And if you really need to put something, you really want to have a save like a rhino, it'll get the yeah. save, you know? Oh, so, cool. So that works. Um, what? <laughs> Uh, I think that's about it, but you know, just just before we started recording today, I was, uh, I was on Facebook, and one of the memories that came up was from six years ago. Six year old memory popped up in my feed of my first orc painting project. Ooh! I was super triggered because it was like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't want to paint more boys, no. It was like all of my boys sitting, standing, ready to be painted, and I'm like, no, I don't. Second edition do grots, man. Do not want, do <laughs> not want. So yeah, from two two thousand and this the winter of two thousand and ten, we I think we got started around November or so. We started playing forty k. Wow, nice, good memories, man. That would be fifth edition, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, fifth edition. Yeah. Pretty crazy, nice. pretty crazy. So that's about it, I think. Um, so next we have our segment on uh, the uh, Curse of the Wolfen. Um, we're going through the rules for the book and see how how to bring uh, this uh, campaign to life on your tabletop or uh, use the rules in your own narrative. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Greetings, mofos. Are you out of George Dickel number eight, staring at a broken chess machine? Uh, Don't want to spend the rest of the year tied to that couch? Well, why don't you head on over to the One Hour a Night Facebook page and see what exciting stuff is going on there. It's a place to post all your daily progress in the hobby grind, as well as receive and give positive feedback. Also... There are usually a few interesting challenges going on. That's right. Uh, All you have to do is search for one hour a night on Facebook. That's numeral one hour a night. All one word. Blood serum tests will be administered prior to approval. Sæt det helvete og kom dere vekk. Det er ikke bikke. Det er en slags ting. Den imiterer bikke, men det er ikke det. Kom dere vekk, idioter. What he said. Hey, Masters of the Forge listeners, are you looking to expand your Warhammer 40,000 gaming group? Do you want to start a 40k club in your area? Do you want the people you attract to be like-minded mofos? Do you want to advertise your YouTube channel? Or even attract more subscribers to your hobby blog or online community? Then what better way than to advertise on the Masters of the Forge podcast? All we ask of you is that you email us at mastersoftheforge at gmail.com or message us on Facebook with a full text of your advertisement, including the region in which you live and any contact information people can use to get a hold of you. We will have one of our many tech servitors read your advertisement on the air. We promise not to make fun of you. Though we can't always predict the actions of our servitors, you really can't find good help these days. No, you can't. Welcome back. So... This book, this very expensive book, which is nice, um, has is just chock full of content, wouldn't you say, Jason? Yeah, um, I went ahead and picked up the EPUB. Uh, oh, cool! Because I kind of wanted to know what the what we were doing, to be perfectly honest. Um, mm-hmm. No, it's and good yeah, I went to buy the physical one too. <laughs> so, it's really good. It's got Yeah. Um let's just start with the very first thing they mention here and it's something that we've worked on in the past, something we've done uh personally for the for the podcast and that is um planetary environments. And this they call them hostile environments, but I think that pigeonholes it a little too much. 
because yeah. it's just is they're really just talking about unique environmental conditions. Uh, this includes not only just regular, it's like they don't just have environment effects, but in here they also have some uh, alternative uh, um, mysterious objectives too, which is something that we have done in the past. And for those of you at home, it's uh, chapter five, missions. Sorry, I have actually have the EPUB open. <laughs> <laughs> All so right. the first the first one is a haunted planet. Um, this is really cool. It's it's got a um, obscured uh, terrain type uh, effect, which has been done many times before. It reminds me very much of old night fight rules. Um, it's got you can't you can't attack anything that's more than twenty four inches away. Um, oh wait, no, no, this one is a little different, actually. You can't attack anything more than 24 inches away. Uh, and when you're yeah, I thought that when was you, really cool. When you're a targeting unit more than 12 away, you roll a, default, you roll a D6, and it, on a 1 through 4, you can't target it. So, I think that means you can't switch your target. Um, no, you can't. That's what I... That's whenever I read that, that was well. the okay. idea that I got. Uh, on a six, on a six, from six inches to twelve inches, it can't be targeted on a one or a two. Um, and uh, on a, on a, uh, on one, uh, you know, one to six inches, it's fine. You just you can see them; they're close enough. And then, uh, uh, in addition to that, you roll a roll a d six when something is assaulting you, and it's just on a one to a three. Your Overwatch doesn't work. I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, uh, also, that is yeah. pretty cool. Actually, that's an interesting expansion. Little to the unique role. Yeah, little unique. Um, then we have haunted ruins. So if you're within three inches of a building ruin or fortification, your leadership and ballistic skill are at a minus one. I, uh, I like that. That's pretty cool. I, I think that it's simple. It's not yeah. like ghosts attack you. No, you're just right. like. You're super aware of the creepy crap going on in the ruins. Um, if you want to adjust that for units that have fearless or just have and they shall know no fear, you can. But even those, even even those people like like the space wolves, they're so superstitious and stuff that it's not that they're afraid; it's that they're alert and ready for some any weird thing that might pop out and attack them. Yeah. My favorite part of the of the haunted planet, though, is the vanishing's mysterious objective. Oh, I you, love you, this. Yeah, you don't, you don't use um, on a one instead of sabotaged. Uh, you roll a dice when it's revealed. On a three through six, one of your models one of your models in the unit vanishes. It's randomized. Just to try not to discover objectives with your warlord's unit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Or a rhino. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> on a two, D6 models are removed. And on a one, the whole unit is gone. <laughs> I... Okay, that wow. special rule is great. That's I think that's when I read that was when I texted you earlier and went, oh my god, this is... Where has this book been? Why didn't I buy this when I was <laughs> in New York? Why? Oh, well. This would be great to use in the um, the Doctor Who uh, table that that I'm building. Oh yeah, the oh the, yeah. the graveyard with the with the dying TARDIS. Yeah, that would actually that would be yeah that'd be awesome. I I I love this hostile environment. Like they've had previously, like contaminated ground was one of the mm -hmm. hostile environment missions and. Yeah, it was a uh, downloadable one shot, and it was okay. But this, yeah, this speaks to me. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what it's saying, but <laughs> well, it is. It, it is. It is coming from the ether. <laughs> what do we have next, Jason? Uh, sorry, uh, abandoned defense network. This one's confusing. Um, it w the way it was written was super confusing at first. Yeah, it's a little odd. Um, I actually read it a couple of times and started kind of. You know, scratching notes to go. Oh, okay, this is what it wants. I think the important you... thing to remember is that 
the defense net defense networks protocols thing is for the entire battlefield not for yeah. each individual gun oh it is yes. i thought it was each individual gun no Ooh. okay well then that's this would actually be a nice little zone mortalis thing it would it yeah. really would okay all right let me get to this so that the listeners don't like want to strangle me for talking too much <laughs> Uh, all right, so abandoned defense network. Everything depends on knowing the defense network's protocols. So what you have are identification protocols. When you are targeted by automated fire from the network, roll a die. On a six, you have identified the transponder signal, and it won't target you for the rest of the game. Um, if you do not roll a six, you can try return thereafter and add a die each time it fires on you, which is yeah, pretty and nice. You know- you know, and I'm also a little wary of whether it what. See, that's why this is confusing. It made it seem like it's every turn it fires on you, but I actually think you get to do it no matter what the way it's worded. For I my seeing a game, it was a re... it was every game turn, right? Yeah, I would. Th- I yeah. think. I think it would be at the end of every every one of your turns. I think. I'm just very confused. It's like every time it, at first, it, it initiates the first time you get fired upon, but I yeah. think you still get to roll at the end of every game turn or at least yeah. every, at the end of every one of your turns. Like I said, it's a little confusing listeners. You can play with it at however you think is best, but I, I think it works better if you get it every turn. Yeah. All right. So next is automated fire. Uh, emplaced weapons can only be manually fired by units that know the protocols, and they always shoot at the nearest unit that doesn't know the protocols, the automated fire. Mm -hmm. If one side knows the protocols and the other doesn't, it only fires in the turn of the side that knows the protocols. And if both sides know the protocols, then normal rules apply. Right. So if if you know the protocols, you're not getting shot at by a automated fire then we have orbital defense network which is pretty interesting if one side knows the protocols and the other does not the side that doesn't know gets a negative one to their reserve rolls right which could be that could be pretty rough depending on what you're bringing in yeah, and I think that the, in that rule is what made me realize that it's an overall knowledge of the protocols rather than yeah. by individual emplacement. Yeah. Yeah, that one's the... It is a little tricky overall, but, you know, maybe... I you... like the idea of this. Like, you could yeah. take all of your fortifications, don't pay for them, just throw them all on the table for this yeah. battle and just run with it. I think that could be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think that would probably work really well. Um, the more I look at this, the more I think that it would really, really come into its own and its own Mortalis board. You I know, think that. you're probably right. Yeah. Well, I was Have rereading all those guns and stuff. Yeah. Well, I was rereading and the, the doors. Uh, zone Mortalis rules last night. Mm-hmm. You, someone had posted the Hackney area tabletop enthusiasts. Did I get all that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Hate mm-hmm. Club their kind of primer for 30k and they'd actually mm-hmm. listed 30k rules specifically and mm-hmm. it had zone mortalis rules and i was reading back over them going oh yeah that's right that's an optional rule that's an optional rule <laughs> including the blip rule that we used that mm-hmm. i fell in love with oh, that's um, such a good rule yeah that one i don't know man i i i think i have a man crush on whoever designed that rule and i don't even know them <laughs> It's 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 sad, but it'll be okay. All right. Next, we have Ice World, which I don't know. Every one of these is my favorite. So <laughs> the best yeah, one is hard, bottomless, right? It's... Right. The the first yeah. one is bottomless crevasse. Models making dangerous terrain chests at the ground level, or if they're like jumping to ground level, um, they don't make a save. Instead, they make an initiative <laughs> test or fall to their doom. <laughs> They're removed from play. <laughs> so, like, yeah, a, a crack oh, yeah. opens up and they fall in. I thought that was amazing. And I think the, um, oh, uh, 
uh, Mini Wargaming did this mission, or at least they used the Ice World rules for a mission that they played, and it was really funny watching the the jump guys falling into their death. <laughs> I think that you should expand this rule and include gets hot rolls. Yeah, like, let's do if that. You roll a one on gets hot. It just <laughs> melts the ice beneath you, and you fall to your death. <laughs> I. I... I would rule that as a, a do that. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> You're um, right. Every one of these special rules or these environmental rules is just like, oh, that's my favorite. No, that's my favorite. No. <laughs> then we have Ice Storm. At the start of each turn, each player rolls a dice on a double. The storm intens- intensifies. So like you both roll it, roll the die, and then if it, they both come up the same number, you do these rules. Models may not run, turbo boost, or swoop. If you're swooping, your flight mode changes immediately. Um, then you roll a dice for each non-vehicle unit. On a one, you take D6 strength, four AP5 shred wounds. Not yeah. not bad. Not light. Like a lot. In the past, it's been easy to kind of be like, let's do a bunch of crazy crap. But in this, it's like every once in a while, someone's blasted by shards of ice and you take some minor damage. It's pretty yeah. cool. So if it was on ones, then Skip would never, ever play it. <laughs> uh, yeah, unless he's rolling for stomps, that jerk. Um, oh, then... <laughs> ouch. Ouch. Uh, then we have Whiteout. Now, this is the one that's like old... Um, old uh, night fight. More than 12 inches away, you have stealth. Uh, more than 24 inches away, you have shrouded. It doesn't say instead. So you have both stealth and shrouded when you're 24 inches away. Uh, oh, more so than 36 away. Yeah. More than Ooh. 36 away, you're invisible. You can't be seen. So because yeah. whiteout. Because opaque. Snow is opaque. So that's pretty cool. I like Ice yeah. World. It's definitely something I would... And let's be honest. This rule... Um, along with some of the other rules in this book, make it really, really easy to play um, the uh, uh, attack on Fenris missions. Uh, that yeah. We, uh, from uh, what what was the book we read? Um, Ferris the Wolfen? Oh, no. Battle of the Fang. Battle of the Fang, yeah. yeah. The, all these rules, like we can just take down our special rules for for the for that book and just insert yeah. these because this is this is perfect for battle of yeah. the thing. All right, then uh next we have the Ministorum Shrine World. And we This have... one's my favorite. Oh, this one's your favorite? Okay. <laughs> no, they're oh. all my favorite. <laughs> yeah, actually I the I think the first rule might be your favorite. All right, so <laughs> profane zeal all non-imperial units have hatred armies of the imperium. Yeah, it's which... like a goth it's like a goth kid walking into the Christmas tree shop. It's the <laughs> worst. <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle your face. <laughs> All right, the uh, I I'm just imagining, you know, your orcs running around on in this rule set. You know, yeah. Just, just beating everything. Um <laughs> let's see. Sacred Ground. Armies of the Imperium have stubborn. Whoop. And this one's kind of cool, actually. I like this next one. Saintly Wrath. Replace all nothing of note objectives with Saintly Presence. Non Imperial units suffer uh non Imperial units within three inches suffer d6 strength 5 ap4 soul blaze yeah. which i, and like, I like that, that. Yeah. yeah and uh it makes me rethink my um mechanic for some of our mysterious objectives um yeah. i have some that are like if you are holding this the enemy that is nearby blah 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 it's so much easier just to be like any non whatever unit within a certain distance suffers this thing regardless yeah. of whether the, your, the you know the allied faction is holding it or not it just makes sense so as i'm looking at that and as i'm reading it i keep seeing this rule i keep thinking of like scooby doo for some <laughs> reason 
I, I don't know why. It just that's what comes to mind. I mean, not that they've written anything in there. Not there's a dog or Velma or whatever, but mm, you know, just Velma. for some mm. reason. Yeah. Um, <laughs> didn't go any farther. Wait, where was discussion. I? Where was I? Yeah. Uh, do you need to? You need to get take a couple of minutes. Uh, no, okay. I'm good. I'm finished. <laughs> I'm finished. All right, but yeah, it just it it reminds me of um of a Scooby Doo like. I don't know. One of their mysteries, I guess. I don't know. Mm-hmm. All right. I get it. I get it. Yeah. So uh, those are some pretty cool. Um, those are some pretty cool rules, and definitely should should be put into your binder of special mission stuff. Uh, you know, I'm starting to think I need to put together a physical, literal binder of some of these special mission rules that yeah. GW has put out. Be- I, I feel like that's a product I would buy instantly if they yeah. were to put it out. A book of their special mission rules or, or combining all these kind of special missions into one place. Um, they did that. Oh, God, what was it? It was actually called Altar of War. Yeah. Uh, a large yeah. book full of missions. But it didn't have It didn't have a lot of... Uh, I don't want to make the say be rude, but it wasn't as interesting as this stuff is. Yeah, there's some you know? old there's an old book that I have that um one of our players gave us for for making custom missions and they're old they're like it's from 5th edition so you okay. know it's just a lot of interesting deployment types and and, yeah. and special stuff like that. Um whereas this is like straight up like creating entire environments for you to play in. Uh, some of it yeah. seems obvious when you read it, but that's the beauty of it. The more obvious it seems when you read it, the more you realize how ingenious it is. Um, well, like I wasn't going to get this uh, the physical copy of this book because it's Space Wolves. Come on. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I'm looking more and more at this stuff, it's like, yeah, I really, I really should get this just because of all the narrative things. Each one of these um, environments could be reskinned. Oh, and the missions sure. that we're about to start talking about, wow, yeah, there's so many cool things that could be modified just with just mm-hmm. slight changes, and yeah, really these, not even that much. These missions, more than any, I think, more than any of the missions previous, and I, I you know, of at least of the ones we've read, okay, uh, that put that little caveat out there. But yeah. these missions have innovated quite a bit. These are very innovative and thoughtful missions. Yep. I just want to say that because they, they truly are. If you read these and truly look at them from a game design perspective, they're very well designed f- now for this narrative purpose, of course. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Echoes of War missions. Now, there is a special campaign chart uh, for this for this uh, campaign setting. If you want to run this as a campaign, it gives you, not only is it, does it fairly give special things to the victor of the previous mission. Um, it sets up a really cool kind of structure for future campaigns that you might run. This isn't very super involved. Like some of the forge world campaign systems. It's very simple and great for when just two friends are playing out a campaign over six missions. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. If, if you're going to sit down for a month or a month and a half of weeks and get together once a week to play a book, play play the missions out of this book, it's a, it's just a perfect way to, to let the campaign develop. Yeah. Um, so well, whenever throughout... we... Uh... Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, when we did the Kalyan book, you know, that that campaign system worked really well. And I see, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that with its success that and with the success of this, that GW keep, well, it looks like they're going to keep doing these campaign books. And mm-hmm. I'm really, yeah. really excited for that. You know, yeah, I'm, I think I'm, some folks yeah. are, are complaining about, like, the fact that there's rules all throughout these books, too. And they'd prefer to see yeah. the rules for the for the factions in the main rule, in the those factions rule books. The yeah. thing is, you can't, that's not, that would not be as 
agile way to develop these armies because right. you'd have to put out a new codex every time you had new ideas. Yeah. These campaign books are a way to in an ag in an agile manner put out new rules for factions that have existed for a long time and yeah. uh simultaneously tell a story. Uh it has the secondary effect of making people want to buy the campaign books because yeah. otherwise a lot of the time not every player would be invested in buying a campaign book. Adding adding some you know, some uh, uh, faction rules in there uh, makes it more appealing to a larger number of players. So yeah. I, I don't know if, if I'm off the mark there or whether you think people think that that's a moral way to go about doing it. But I think, I think the first point does stand the fact that you want an agile way of, of putting out rules. Well, I mean, one of the things that I think from what I understand, one of the problems that fifth edition had was, rules became stale and the game mm -hmm. became stale yeah. and if they'd had something like this it would have extended the lifetime of that rule set i i would think you know i mean there may be things that need to be I mean, i'm sure there were things that need to be changed but i mean i don't want to go through and pick up a new codex that's basically a reskin mm -hmm. you know yeah i'd rather get these campaign books because they do tell a story and i mean i Hey, I'm a co-host on a narrative podcast, so whatever. <laughs> um, but I mean, there's there's stuff in here that they it's as you said, it's more agile. And if someone doesn't want those special rules, or they don't want the missions, or they just want the special rules, give it three months, give it six months. Mm -hmm. um, Calion came out what last um, I don't know October, September, mm -hmm. like the year be like the, it's been out over a year, and then Angels of Death showed up in. April, May. So, I mean, they'll go through and put those rules out there. It may be that it takes a few months to get them. And they're valid. Come out you eventually. may have yeah. to like you may have to like take a pen and like write a couple extra things in the book, but it's, Yeah. You know, whatever, it's still usable. Uh so yeah, with that in mind, let's forge into these Echoes of War missions and Uh so the first mission is of Wolf and Iron. Um this one is uh very much uh, about the uh, the very opening sequence of the campaign, when the space wolves uh, the space wolves arrive in the uh, superhive of Erkala and they're looking for the wolfen for the first time. Um, the the wolves player has a twenty four inch deep deployment zone. And the demons player has a forty-eight inch deep deployment zone, so there's no no man's land. They're just yeah. that's the deployment zone. Um, the demons player places six objectives in their deployment zone, so that's that whole entire three quarters, or sorry, two thirds of the of the board, um, six inches from the edges and twelve inches from each other. So they can either choose to the 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 I think the ingenious thing about this mission is that. The wolves are basically looking for one objective, and one of those objectives are the wolfen. Yeah. So, like, all you know, in some in some ways, sometimes you want to cluster the objectives together if you're the one placing the objectives. But in this case, you're just trying to deny the space wolves the ability to score those objectives because yeah. they're looking for the wolfen. So. It, it behooves you to actually kind of spread them out a little bit so that so that they're not like grabbing multiple objectives on the same turn like the wolves actually have to run around looking for the objective um uh in uh, uh throughout this mission so so you're you're basically running around as the wolves uh every time you get within uh one of within three inches of any objective it's not whether you're holding the objective just within three inches uh you roll a die on a one to five it's removed um and uh on a six it, you place the wolf all your wolfen units within six inches of the objective and remove all the rest now if there's only one objective left then it's that one um but you still uh, have to come within three inches of it to have the That's, auger trays yeah that is absolutely correct um the wolfen that are placed they're placed within six inches and they can't move but they can shoot and charge as normal um if at the end of the game 
Uh, no wolfen are found, and or if they're all killed, uh, the demon player wins. A lot of these object, a lot of these missions are like just like okay, if this narrative thing happens, you win or lose. And I, I kind of like that. It makes it a lot easier. Um, yeah. You don't need to have like multiple layered mission objectives for a narrative mission. It's just like sometimes it's cut and dry, right? Yeah, um, I, I like this also. I mean, think, I mean, it's you're looking specifically for the wolfen, and making it easier is a lot mm. better. And what's I forgot really to... wild? Go ahead. Sorry, I forgot to say, of course, that the you, the wolfen need to be part of your list. You can have any yeah. number. You can have whatever you want, is, but when you reveal that objective, all the wolfen come out at that time. So the answer is don't take a lot of wolfen. <laughs> it could be. You know, that's the yeah. tough part. Um, if you have, if you say, okay, one small unit of wolfen, great. Yeah. You You have a lot of... Uh, you have a lot of force at the start of the game, and you might, and you're probably going to be able to reveal the wolfen by the end. Yeah. But it's also very likely that those wolfen could be easily wiped out because it's only one unit. That is true. On the, on the other hand, if you choose to bring a lot of wolfen, you're gonna you're gonna very you're gonna have a tough time getting to those last three objectives or so. Yeah. But when you reveal them the enemy is going to have a hard time killing every single one of them. So yeah. I think it's, I think it's give and take um, in this mission. I think there's ways to game the mission, like drop pods and stuff could make it way easier to, oh, to yeah. do it. Um, but they, they do suggest using the uh, iron wolves formation. Yeah. Um, which is more, you know, that's not, that's not exactly a, uh, a drop pod army. No, it's so uh, speak. it's kind of a rhino <laughs> rush. If I remember, I read it a little bit earlier, and it sounded yeah. more like everyone has to be mechanized. That's right. Everybody has to yeah. be mechanized. So, um, I just think that's interesting. Uh, it's a cool mission, um, and uh, it can definitely be used in other with other like you could you could use it for any faction. To be honest. This is great for our hero is missing. You know, we have to find yeah. our hero. Or like, imagine um, Sisters of Battle are going up against like Chaos Space Marines or whatever, and the Chaos Space Marines are looking for the bones of a of a fallen saint, right? And yeah. uh, they and they're going through this graveyard trying to find these bones. And uh, whoever can, whoever can, uh, and, and they're trying to trying to stop the sisters from finding her. And when they do find her, they open up the casket, and the saint jumps out, fully formed, and ready to fight. You know, stuff like that. I think it would be really cool to. Hello, you can saint modify Celestine. this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you can modify this for literally any any kind of uh, cool unit in the game to tell any kind of story you want. Yeah. Or like Legion of the Damned, since I run a billion of them for mm -hmm. giggles. Oh, th yeah, that would be a perfect Legion of the Damned yeah. mission, dude. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm just finding all of the missions and whatnot. Just now, you know, we talked about the environments being. Oh no, that's my favorite. Well, now <laughs> missions are kind of right. doing the same thing. Uh, <laughs> the next mission, and this mission, I really, really like. It reminds me a bit of. Um, the flyer mission in the Kalyan book. Mm -hmm. And it also reminds me kind of what it reminds me more of like Gorka Morka or mm -hmm. some sort of Mad Max idea. And, and you'll see in a second. So it's called a rivalry rekindled and it is space wolves and dark angels versus demons. This is my favorite um, mission. Yeah. Um, I guess this could be better as a Dark Angels versus Space Wolves with robotic demons if you're playing Skip. Um, yeah, even at the end, like, it does say, hey, you might want to run this as, like, a three-player game. Yeah. But we'll see more in the when, when you finish when you finish talking about oh, it. Yeah, we'll we'll discuss why. Oh, yeah. All right, so um, you need to bring fast models. Um, mm -hmm. And you'll see why as we continue going through. Also, and I read this as I, as I was reading through this, points values are not used in this mission. Mm -hmm. Each player, this is a quote, each player can field as many units as they have in their collection. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. So the board setup, the board setup's a little bit different. It is a 24-inch wide canyon, so it's two feet wide. Um, it's 24 inches by, by 72, so it's two feet by six feet. That changes, though. Uh, Space Wolves and Dark Angels each get a 12-inch deployment zone at the east end of the canyon, with the demons in their own 12 by 24 inch zone 12 inches away. And this leaves 36 inches of board between the demon zone and the western board edge. And this this is all in the um in the mm-hmm. book so it's it's imagine, easy to see. Imagine the space wolves and the raven guard are at one side, the demons are in the middle and the demons are going to try to get off the far board edge. Actually yeah. both both groups are trying to get off the board the far board edge to be honest. Yep. So, the Space Marines deploy first and go first. Uh, The player who moves one unit off the western edge wins. And the game only ends when a player is wiped out or someone moves off. Right. So, all it takes is one unit, but it is is actually kind of hard, I think. Yeah, you need to be able to move um, at least 12 inches per... Per turn, I mean, there's you just have mm-hmm. to. Do we actually? That's why I think flesh hounds are really good for this mission because they have yeah. scout, they have scout and the twenty and the twelve inch move. So I think they'd yeah. be really good for this. Well, we'll talk about jump infantry in a minute. That's my favorite part. <laughs> All right, so special rules: uh, haunted planet, reserves. Uh, the chase is on. So here's where it gets fun. At the end of turn two and every game term thereafter. Remove the eastern 2 by foot 2 by 2 board and add it to the west. Models removed go into ongoing reserves except immobilized vehicles. The last board is revealed at the end of the game turn 8 and play continues. So it's like a side scroller like mm-hmm. um for those of you who are older, you might remember <laughs> Defender or some of those other, you know, video games. Zaxund. Um, yes. Okay, hold on. We're not going to do that. We're, we're, we're going to continue with 40K. <laughs> we're going to stay on 40K. It'll be okay. All right. Fighting three dimensions? Move. What? <laughs> no, no. That's for other it was people. Fake, it was fake three dimensions, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So fighting on the move. I, I like this rule quite a bit. Um, hold on. At the end of the assault phase, models are no longer locked in combat. Uh, and dangerous terrain checks are needed for moving through enemy models. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. You can assault someone, but because you're supposed to be moving, you're you not move locked. Out. Yeah, you, you're not locked, and you can move next turn if you want to. Yeah. And that's pretty nice. Um, or your let's... opponent can move either way. Oh, yeah. So previous mission victory. No, hold on. Let's jump to the next time. Uh, no there's no time for no, no this is the pre this is the previous m- mission victory from the last one. Oh, okay do you want me to, well hold on so one of the other let me get to two other rules then we'll talk about the previous okay. mission victory stuff okay no problem. uh no time for retreat so all units are fearless so you're on your way you're fearless uh mm-hmm. thrusters to maximum i kind of <laughs> love this one Jump infantry can move up to 18 inches in the movement phase. That's right. <laughs> We're making jump infantry great again. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's rather funny. I I never really liked um, playing jump infantry whenever I first started. Like, I liked painting them, but every time I'd play them, they'd just die. But now mm. I've kind of started, I don't know, becoming interested in painting the tactical again. options you have with yeah. jump infantry are so great yeah when you think about using them and you cut them out just right I, they're just really good yeah so let's see hold on where else okay so previous mission victory we'll finally get there all right so in the previous mission if the imperials won space wolf infantry can run and charge in the same turn so they can nice. move 18 inches run and charge yeah, because here, have a chain sword. You look like you need one. Um, <laughs> chaos. Uh, if Chaos won the previous, demon chariots can flat out and charge in the same turn. Nice. Because they want to give hugs as well. 
They love the hugs. And yeah. I know in this mission, they're thinking the chariots of Zinch, but I'm like, skull cannons, rawr! Oh, <laughs> yeah. And since they're not locked in combat, that makes it so great. Jumping uh... combat, assault, and then like, now I'm running away and shooting you with my big cannon, then assaulting you again. We're having fun. <laughs> this sounds like how I run my white scars. <laughs> right? It feels like, well, it's, that's yeah. very much what it is. It's a running, yeah. it's a running chase fight scene. It's awesome. Yeah. I, I really do like this, this mission. It reminds, I mean, it reminds me of Mad Max, you know, and fortunately mm-hmm. or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, <laughs> I saw that well, at it, a young age it feel- and, yeah. yeah, it feels like Gorkamarka, which is yeah. Mad Max, which yeah. is great. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's just it's it, it's awesome. Sorry, I'm I'm getting all you know whatever fanboy. Yeah, the next mission is an arena of blood. Uh, da, da, this da. one. Oh, you know, you know what? Uh, what I like about this is it's like chaos demon, just like the last mission. It's demons, gray knights. Well, you have three factions, right? And uh, it's Chaos Demons, Grey Knights, and Space Wolves. But just like the last mission, it's a race to see which Imperial faction wins, really. Like, in a rivalry rekindled, you can actually have two people play the Dark Angels and the the Space Wolves. And whoever gets off the other side wins. (laughs) They're, like, competing with each other to see who can... Uh, like blocking each other with their units or whatever, your dumb stuff like that to see who can get to the wolf in first. The same well, here. Um, you. One can, thing I was uh, going to say um, was after reading Curse of the Wolfen and the uh-huh. Legacy of Rust series, that's that's a spoiler for the entire for all those <laughs> books, and that's yeah. all it is. It's them like you know, the Wolfen trying to be hidden, or the Space Wolves trying to hide the Wolfen, and everyone mm-hmm. else saying, "Hey." That looks like heresy over there. What's going on? There's nothing no heresy. What? Heresy? There's no heresy nothing over here. <laughs> There's nothing to see. You. Yeah. Look the other way. These are not the robots you're looking for. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> so, yeah. in essence, this mission is a race between Logan Grimnar and uh, Gabriel Seth to see who can kill the, the uh, Bloodthirster first. <laughs> it's amazing <laughs> i love this mission it is the best so each game ha- each game turn has three player turns um you have a 48 inch square battlefield with dawn of war deployment and it represents the dome of the penitents from that uh one scene we read about in the book yeah. uh space wolves deploy first and the gray knights are in reserves um if you're playing it thematically, the Grey Knights are in their Thunder, or sorry, their uh, Storm Ravens. Yeah. Um, Space Wolves get to deploy first. Uh, the game ends when either both Imperial Warlords are killed or the Demon's Warlord is killed. Uh, victory conditions are based on who kills the Demon Warlord or both Imperial Warlords. Uh, the uh, special rules are we're going to use the Ministorum Shrine World. Awesome. Reserves. Yep. Now, one interesting thing about reserves is it's it's in an enclosed airspace. So flyers leaving or entering airspace take dangerous terrain checks. That includes the storm ravens of the uh, this. So, and they it's in the rules, right, or in the in the story, yeah. right? They just flew through the shell of the yeah. dome. <laughs> Why not? Let's do this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Brothers in Arms is uh, the space wolves and the gray knights. They can't attack each other. Um, it's so dumb. Uh, demonic yeah. flood uh, destroyed demon units go into ongoing reserves and are treated like summoned units when they come back. So it, they 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 go into ongoing reserves, but they're new units. So if they're in a formation or a detachment, they don't get any of those special rules. Yeah, they come back as a cad. That seems to be the or not as a cad. They come, come back as back. nothing. They come yeah. back as nothing. Uh, so they have previous mission victory here from the last mission. If the Imperials won the last mission, then the demon players may only return troops and elites using that demonic flood rule. Oh, okay. That could be good. For Chaos, their warlords and vulnerable save increases by one, which they're going to need it if they have both Gabriel Seth and Logan Grimnar trying to kill them. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
The only, um, fueled... the only issue I see as we get farther in this campaign is if someone loses one of these, they could be put behind the eight ball pretty quick. Yeah, it's not... I would yeah. say it's not as bad as some rules that have been set up for this kind of thing in the past. That's true. And it's only for the next mission. So yeah. it doesn't carry on. So at least there's that. But yeah, the plus one invulnerable save is very good. Yeah. Um, fueled by rage, the warlord has the it will not die special rule and D3 extra attacks. That's based. I mean, you have to balance that it out somewhat. Nice. Yeah, you have to balance it out somewhat or else he would he would be really outclassed. And um, each D3 is rolled in each assault, so it's not like roll it yeah. once and... Yeah, you, yeah, you're stuck with one yeah. attack, yeah. Um, he rerolls any failed saves, which is ex- that's yeah. excellent, except those by the Imperial Warlords. So if Gabriel Seth attacks, then he doesn't get to reroll his saves. Yeah. Um, and then the, the Imperial Warlords get hit and run... Uh, except when they hit and run, they have to move directly towards the Chaos Warlord. I like that. <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah, like, that's great. I am chopping you up. Get out of my way. <laughs> I have bigger yeah. fish to fry than you people. <laughs> you know, it's, yeah, I mean, you can just kind of see those, you know, in every epic battle mm. that takes place, you know, during Game of Thrones or whatever, that, you know, here's the Warlord just chopping guys down and pushing them away because he's going after the other Warlord. Mm-hmm. And that yeah. is, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and that's definitely a rule you could lift and put in any any mission. Yeah. Um, irresistible challenge. Uh, if Logan is within twelve inches of the the uh, enemy warlord, he can issue his own little challenge. Uh, and that's like if if the demon like ends his movement within twelve inches, uh, out of turn, the wolves warlord is like, "Hey, f- come fight me!" And he has to. He has to charge. Come at he me, bro. He has to attempt. Yeah, he says, come at yeah. me, bro, and he has to come at him, bro. Yeah. Um. This is this mission clearly can be used for any factions. There's yeah. nothing here. You might want to adjust the uh, mission victory bonus because plus one invulnerable save might not be very helpful to, say, orcs. But um. Oh yeah, for orcs that wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't do. Orcs would have to be two up or Maybe plus like two. Sorry, plus two or plus one yeah. feel no pain or some weird thing like that would be good. Uh, but other than that, I think this is a great. I think this is a great mission. Like the chase between the space wolves and the gray knights to see who can kill the warlord first. I love yeah. that. I love the entire idea of that. And this is gonna be bloody too because you're gonna have three assault phases to to get through. Yeah. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. All right. So our next one is Scattered Drop. Um, and this one's really, really quite interesting, um, especially the way it's set up. It is Space Wolves versus Chaos Space Marines, particularly Alpha Legion. Mm-hmm. So uh, previous mission victory, whoever won that may reroll to see who goes first. The way that the board is set up is is quite fascinating. There's six two by two battlefields, so they're mm-hmm. not six tiles together. They're six separate battlefields. That's um, right. Which I thought was pretty cool. And what happens is the space wolves deploy within six inches of the center of each battlefield. The CSM deploy twelve inches away from the center. Starting with the space wolves player. Players alternate setting up units, and the first six units must be in different battlefields. So you'll have to take a considerable number of units. I found the setup pretty interesting, the alternating of setting up. That's how it used to be in 5th edition, correct? Or 4th edition? Yeah, and they still use it as a mechanic in some of their missions. Okay, because it's also a Sigmar thing, right? Mm Mm-hmm, yep. So they still like be, it. Yeah. It's still good for some things, you know. Yeah, I, I like it. It's it's interesting because you can do all sorts of um, interesting tactics before you've even played the game. Or yeah, and in this the one, die. the person, the person who's placing second actually yeah. has a huge advantage because with these two foot by two foot battlefields and having to put like one in each. Um, yeah. Before you start, the person who reacts gets to put a unit that 
could outclass the unit that the person first put. Or right. if the person just put down like an Imperial Knight, I'm like, well, I'm putting Grotz in this square because <laughs> 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 nope, <laughs> nope. <laughs> hey, you've got plenty of second edition Grotz, although I've heard you may yeah. want more. So they can die just as quickly. Uh. I put one in each corner, and we'll just <laughs> just just go on Imperial Knight. Try to kill, try to kill less than a hundred points worth of guys. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so uh, the player controlling the most battlefields uh, wins. Uh, players control battlefields when they are in them, but no enemy unit is present. Yeah. Yeah. You have to destroy every unit in that square to control the battlefield. But you must be present in that battlefield to score it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fun. All right, uh, let's see. Special rules, Ice World, uh, Reserves. Into the fray, units arriving from reserves can do so from any edge of any battlefield. Retreat and regroup. CSM retreat toward nearest table edge. Space wolves retreat towards the center of the battlefield. That's pretty interesting. Uh, reinforcements. Mm -hmm. If there are no enemies in your battlefield, you may go into ongoing reserves during your movement phase. I think that's, right. that's quite interesting. That keeps... Um, Something like the Imperial Knight from getting stuck in mm -hmm. a world where it can't go anywhere, you know? Right, yeah. And, you know, you, you can't have any any enemies in your square to, yeah. to go into ongoing reserve. But, uh, yeah, if you've defeated all the enemies in your quadrant, then you can bounce out. Yeah. Yeah, that mission is is pretty fun. I, once more, I mean, how can you how could you not try to do that for other for other factions or other yeah. other uh, narratives it's any any mission where you think you know units are going to be uh separated across a wider battlefield i think that that's a great representative you could have eight or 12 of these things going at once can you imagine having this being oh, kind yeah. of a weird a weird uh combat patrol apocalypse style combat patrol oh for, yeah i hadn't thought about that this would yeah. be really interesting. Like you're you're fighting these dozens of little combat patrols across a world, and you can jump out to help out other players. You know. Yeah. Or you could I do think kill this teams. Would be fun. Kill. You know, this I mean, would be a great kill team. Yeah. This would be a great way to do kill team. Yeah, for sure. There's, this this actually opens up a lot more interesting narrative possibilities. Mm hmm. Especially yeah. we have so many uh, realm of battle boards at the store. We could yeah. actually run run this as a special event uh, uh, sometime because we just just throw out a whole bunch of two by two boards on the regular tables, and yep. people can kind of warp from board to board. <laughs> I think that would be fun. <laughs> yeah, and that'd be a nice way to put a particularly a large narrative campaign or at least a narrative event, mm -hmm. like what we did with yeah. what was it, the Fall of Haven, a couple of years ago. Mm hmm. So uh, next we have As Above, So Below. This is the mission that we used for our Altar of War uh, episode. Um, so John and I actually played this, Skip, on the boards. Uh, it's supposedly Chaos Demons versus Space Wolves. Um, this is a great mission. Uh, the table is set up as two battlefields. Um each one is two feet wide and six feet long, or six feet deep, I guess you would say. The Chaos Demon deployment zone is 48, 48 inches deep, and then the Space Wolves deployment zone is 12 inches deep on the other side. And that goes for both battlefields. These battlefields are supposed to represent above world and below world. So you put all your vehicles and stuff up top. You can't have any vehicles down below. Uh, then there's four objectives on each battlefield. One at the deployment edge and uh, for the demons, and then one each 12 inches deeper. So there's four objectives marching deeper into the enemy deployment zone. Uh, and the way you score the objectives for the Space Wolves to score objectives if, is if they're holding both of the eastern mo most objectives, they score that objective. So they have to, they have to hold the top and the bottom at the same time. Uh, that was really interesting. If you're holding one 
or zero, uh, it's still a demon's major victory. If you're holding two, of, or if you held two of them, uh, sorry, yeah, I forgot to point that out. Like, if you hold it, it disappears, and you score it forever, basically. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, if you so if you score the easternmost one, they disappear, and then you have to score the next most easternmost one, and so on, so on and so forth. Uh, if you score, if you hold two of them, it's a demon minor victory. If you hold three of them, it's a space wolf minor victory. If you hold all four, if you get to all the way, if you march all the way to the end of the battlefield and hold both of the objectives at the same time, uh, it's a space wolves major victory. So, um, the, uh, the, de- the special rules are, um, uh, neck and neck. So that's just saying that you take both the, take your turns on both sides simultaneously. Um, uh, then fungal quagmire, all units in the above world for the space wolves, uh, need to roll 2d6 to move and they take the highest number. Uh, if they have vehicles moving, uh, uh, cruising speed, then they roll 2d6 and then double the highest instead. Uh, during your turn for all units below uh every enemy unit you roll a d6 and on a six they take fall rock falling damage it's like two like a d6 strength four ap5 hits that's to represent like collapsing ceiling on the world below so this this is a really really fun fun mission for the previous uh previous mission victory though uh one set of objectives move forward or backward three inches, depending on who won, who won the mission. You kind of have to look at this mission to understand what's happening. It's, it's a little tough, but I thought it was the most interesting one of all of them because you get this simultaneous combat thing going. And if you under commit to one area, you're never going to score objectives. Yeah, for the space wolf player, you really want to go even as as even as you can on one side, or else you're go, you're not going to score down to the fourth objective. I would you think know. that as you know, after listening to the the Dawn of War episode and kind of going through and looking at this, this is probably a campaign or a mission that you should really contemplate how you're building your list. This is not Absolutely. a list for all comers. It's not going to happen. No, it, it's really meant. Uh, it what we were pretty close because it's meant yeah. for the Iron Wolves to be up top. Yeah, and uh, the uh, you know in the in the story, the Iron Wolves were up top and they they had tanks and stuff and all of John's tanks. John had um, a bunch of Lehman Russ battle tanks and an Imperial Knight, so that yeah. kind of worked out that way pretty well but you definitely want to read these missions and and it's just, it's true for all the missions like the last one you needed or for the second one you needed fast attack real bad you yeah need... and and i think one of the reasons that that they said take whatever units you want is it would be tough to fill out with like rhinos and and uh, tactical squads and stuff like oh, that oh yeah that'd be you, you really want to just bring all your bikes and your jump packs and and crap like that you know yeah and uh yeah for all of these just talk to your opponent beforehand be like okay we're playing this mission you're gonna bring that well i'm gonna bring this you know this is definitely a narrative yeah this is definitely uh, this is narrative play and you should be prepared to um you know list taylor but in the opposite direction list taylor for just to make sure you can actually Narrative play purposes. the mission. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We we didn't list Taylor for this because we I decided what mission it was like an hour or two before <laughs> we played. So I was at a I was actually at a pretty big disadvantage for it. Yeah. Um. And I you know it's fine. It's fine. We had a great we had a great mission. I had a great time, and I think it was a good recording too. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It, it was really good. It was just. I remember listening to it going, ooh, yeah, that might be a little painful in some of those areas. <laughs> and y'all had mentioned mm-hmm. that as well. All right. Mm-hmm. Uh, mission six, Averting mm-hmm. Disaster. 
All right, so here we go. Uh, Space Wolves and Grey Knights versus Chaos Space Marines and Demons, including a Dark Apostle. Uh, so the Chaos Deployment Zone is 48 inches deep, and the Imperial Deployment Zone is 24 inches deep. And at the center of the Chaos Zone is the Cursed Sigil. The Space Marine player wins if the Cursed Sigil is destroyed. So... Yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> so your special rules. Your Cursed Sigil at the start of the Chaos turn. Uh, the player may use any power listed, but it adds to the instability of the Sigil. So you put a die next to that. Uh, you can restore a unit to full strength, summon a previously destroyed unit, or add one to the mastery level of a demon unit, which could be kind of scary. Um... At the start of the Space Marine turn, take any dice placed next to the Sigil. Add a die if there are any Grey Knights present. present. Add a die if there are no enemy Psychers. Wow, and add two die for each friendly Psyker within three inches of the portal. If two or more die turn up a six, then the portal is destroyed. Wow, okay. Yeah, game ends. So you gotta yeah. be careful about what dice you use there. Yeah, and you've got to add... You have to make sure you have Psychers with you as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. And if they're running... If they're running Dre Knights, that could be... That could be pretty rough pretty quick, yeah. Yeah, you really want to be very aggressive as the, uh, as the uh, uh, Demons player in this mission. Yeah. Uh, previous mission victory. So, from depending on who won the previous mission... If the Imperial player won, they get plus one die per turn. And the Chaos receive one action for free. Yep. If they so, won the yeah. Time. That's pretty that, good. Uh, it's it's pretty good for the Imperial player. I think the Chaos player wouldn't be as good. Yeah. Um, like, the, the, the thing is that you're only allowed to summon a previously destroyed unit. I, yeah. I, I almost think it would be more... It would be easy be a little easier on the demon player if you could just summon whatever unit didn't yeah wouldn't matter or you know <laughs> summon some blue horrors you know they don't <laughs> good to go they don't <laughs> split or anything right you know, it's, just, it's just 10 models not Come yet on. not yet as far as this book is concerned um yeah the uh Ooh. that's a that's a good mission i it's an okay mission it's my least favorite mission of the of the book i think yeah. It's very much attuned to this narrative, and I think it would be yeah. the most difficult to change. You'd have to come up with your own tables, and it really wouldn't... I don't think it really would be worth it. This, I think this mission is very much meant to be a part of this narrative. Yeah. Yeah, I think reskinning this one could be a lot more... Uh, it could be pretty difficult, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, um, I don't know if you noticed... And I, I thought about this earlier. I'm like, wait a minute. Hold on a second. The, the abandoned defense networks was not used at all during the during these missions. No, I didn't notice that. It wasn't used in the as above, so below? No. Lame. Right? Okay, well <laughs> Isn't then. Isn't that weird? Guess what? It would what? work for most of them, wouldn't it? Like yeah. um, the scattered drop when they drop onto Fenris. Or not Fenris, onto... Uh, yeah, the um, drop pod uh, mission, mission four. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah, mission four, uh, arena of blood, where yeah, all of like the, you know all of the defenders have kind of been pushed out by the demons. I think it would be great for that one. I wonder if it's just meant to be used for every mission. I'm good with that. <laughs> I think that makes sense. I think it's really, I think it's meant to be used for all the missions. So yeah. I would just assume. I would just assume that for 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 these missions that that rule is in effect for all of them. Yeah. Um yeah, fun missions, really great. Uh so I guess uh let's move on to just kind of discussing some of the units. Now there's a lot of yeah. units in here and a lot of formations and we're coming up on over an hour, so we're not going to go into all of them. Yeah, we don't uh -huh. have time. Yeah, no. Uh, there is a uh, combi detachment for each faction for both Space Wolves and Demons in here. Uh, both of them are pretty cool. Um, the wolf one is very wolfy. 
uh, super yeah. duper wolfy. Uh, lots of like like furious charge and stuff like that. Um, I like I like the wolf claw strike force one though the counter charge. So mm-hmm. if your opponent is engaged in close combat within within like range of you, basically um during their own charge phase you can charge them so yeah. like if it gets to their charge sub phase and you think you're within range uh, to charge you may charge so this is good if you failed to charge last turn or if they just charged into one of your units uh you can just go ahead and charge them and uh, i thought that was really cool that's that's a fun and narrative uh rule um, yep the, but I think the most important part of this whole thing is, are the are well, first of all, the fact that the book updates a bunch of stuff. Like we were talking before, they used oh, yeah. this book as an opportunity to update things. So, um, the the Space Wolves tanks you can take them as um, uh, units now, uh, squadron them together. Yeah. Uh, some of the old uh, Demon Prince. Uh, uh, units like uh, Bellacor was its own kind of unit, and it was there. What really wasn't in any book, so they added him to this um, stuff like that. They they were able to update a lot of the rules. Uh, there's a bunch of new like a lot of stuff was reprinted in the back uh, for uh, equipment. Uh, some of the chaos powers, but like psychic powers and stuff, are in the back of this book, uh, which is nice. Again, like we were saying, it's it updates it updates those factions pretty well. Um, but I think the most important thing here is, are the Wolfen. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Wolfen are in here again. Uh, if you want to play, if you if you want to play uh, Battle of the Fang, all the rules for playing Battle for the Fang are in this book. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. But, uh... <laughs> like our rules were so, cool but um you know these these are yeah, also very very cool and they have printed legit. pictures and you can buy as a hardback yeah it's super legit uh yeah. these are really good um i guess if you're playing competitively you already know how good wolfen are they are yep kind of broken when combined <laughs> with psychic <laughs> powers and by kind of broken i mean super duper broken but they are also super narrative, and if you play them like a normal human being, they are a lot of fun. And uh, <laughs> I like the fact that they have um, uh, they have a bounding lope. They can run and charge in the same turn and can reroll failed charge rolls, so yeah. they're all just better than orcs. That's fine. Um, Sorry, dude. The death frenzy is fantastic. If it's if the if a model in the unit is slain in the fight subphase. It can then add a, at that current initiative step, pile in and fight before being removed as a casualty. And I, it can do this even if it has already fought. I like that. I like that rule, the death frenzy. I, I really yeah. do like that rule quite a bit. Um, it makes it totally worth it to take yeah. a thunder hammer and storm shield with that, because at least you're you're still always going to get those attacks. Yeah, and if you're going to pay the points cost for thunder hammer storm shield, which is significant. It is. You should be able to punch back at least once. Yeah. They're still yeah. only toughness four, but their strength is five, which is really yeah. good. And they have they have a boatload of attacks and a really good uh, initiative five. Um, uh, they have uh, the Curse of the Wolfen special rule, which is, is supposed to represent kind of that they, they they made an entire spaceship full of space wolves feral. Okay, so yep. <laughs> I read that. I read that in the in the short stories. <laughs> yep. So uh, units within six inches are are affected by the curse of the wolfen. Um, I guess an entire spaceship is a lot bigger than six inches, but I guess if you're living near them for quite some time, it's it, its effects are more mm-hmm. potent. Um, yeah. Blood claws, sky claws, and swift claws are affected within twelve inches because they're new and impressionable youngsters. Yeah. Um, long fangs are only affected within three inches because they're old, grizzled, and most of them are dead lot... anyway. Yeah, you know, you yeah. you can't teach an old dog new tricks, you know. Uh, yeah. So, um, 
it's split up into two different tables um on a when they are not engaged in close combat there is a table called hunt and then when they are when they are engaged in close combat there's a table called kill um it's really interesting like there's things like adding charge distance furious charge increased initiative um re-rolling to wound and then there's a formation that adds a plus one to the effects and adds a new effect to the tables which i think is really neat yeah um, but uh yeah the wolfen i think are everything that they promised they would be and it's everything i would think that they should be i think yeah. and it it really reflects the danger that the wolfen pose to the space wolves not only from a imperial social perspective but a genetic disorder perspective <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah seriously but there's a lot of stuff in here you want to take a look at it i went through and i looked at all the all the formations and stuff and there's a lot of cool stuff in here for making a narrative army for your space wolves nothing for the great company that I want to try doing, but when I say nothing, I mean nothing specific. Um, uh, I, I can actually build what I want using this stuff. Just, to, uh, I would just use, use my weapon choices and stuff like for flamers and whatever. The, yeah. I think it's Garl Grimblood's great company. They love they love setting things on fire and they love <laughs> looking into the future. So good for them. Uh, they sound fun. Oh yeah, yeah, they're cool. Yeah. But yeah, we're not going to go into every artifact, war gear, and warlord trait. Uh, there's too much. We'll be here there's all week. Too much. It's it's this this book. These books are chock full of information for you to play your games narratively. I strongly recommend you look into these. Uh, look into this book, um, and. Uh, consider picking up this just for the missions you can get you can get a month or more of enjoyment out of it just from playing the missions every weekend yeah so well i guess i guess that's it jason unless you have anything else we'll move on to the close out the show well let's let's go ahead and close out the show there's yeah interested in the offbeat world of 40k is your bits box full of 20 year old space elves have you ever searched for something out of production 40K on eBay? Well, hold on to your results and head over to Corsair Radio. It covers the full scope of the hobby, homebrew rules, fluff, campaigns, oddball models, and more. From Terra to the Eye of Terror, visit us at CorsairRadio.blogspot.com. That's CorsairRadio.blogspot.com. Transmission incoming from the Adeptus Terra podcast. A new monthly UK-based 40K podcast has come into the universe, based around the hobby as a whole and the rich background of the 41st millennium. If you're looking for a fun, chilled-out podcast focusing on the fluff of the 41st millennium with tricks and tips on taking part in the hobby, then why not give us a listen? You can find us on iTunes and Facebook as the Adeptus Terra Podcast. You never know, you might just like it. Message ends. This is Rob Sanders, and you're listening to the Masters of the Forge, where the world of 40K comes to life on your tabletop. Welcome back. Well, that was episode 76 of Masters of the Forge. 77. Uh, 70 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 77 of Masters of the Forge. Okay, listeners. I am begging you. Please sign up for the Golden Spear Cup. 2017 it's january 21st and 22nd and i need to pay for the game hall <laughs> real bad and uh if you're in the area or if you feel like flying to beautiful albany in january <laughs> hey 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 actually albany's <laughs> not bad in january i mean it's cold um, it is but you're going cool. to go hang out with a bunch of a bunch of people yeah. who play games who actually shower. Hey, yes, we shower. They do shower, you're, and you're not flying to Albany. You're flying to Cadia, or 
Yeah. Or Prospero or Egg Mortis or wherever you're fighting. Uh, or whatever Fenris. battlefield you're fighting on. Or Fenris. Yeah, yeah, we have a couple boards that could technically be Fenris. Yeah, we do. Beautiful boards. I'm working on terrain, busting my butt, but I need people to register. Please go to goldensprucupgt.com and click on tickets and sign up. Yep. What else can they do if they want to learn more about Masters of the Forge, though? Um. Well, I guess they could look at Twitter. Twitter... Or Facebook? Um, Facebook. Go to our website, mastersoftheforge.com. Yes. Give us nice reviews on iTunes. Yes. That would be super. That's so helpful. That'd make me happy. It would make you very bring happy. Me, it would bring me joy if we had more nice reviews on iTunes. Um, but uh, so we are going to take a couple weeks off. When we get back, we're going to talk about Beast Arises. But until then. Play the game the way you want to. And now the time has gone away. Thank <laughs> you for listening today. Oh, wait, that's a different podcast. Peace. This podcast is protected by the Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives Non Commercial International License. More information about this license and contact information if you have any requests can be found at our blog, mastersoftheforge.com. The music used in this podcast was made by Podod of the duo Sublevel 3. The track is used with his permission. It's such a good feeling to play games your way. It's such a happy feeling, 40 king away. And when you throw dice with story in mind, it's such a wonderful way to unwind. It's a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know. That we'll be back when the Fortnite's new, and we'll have new ideas for you, and you'll have things you'll want to talk about. We will too.